Hello YouTube, I hope your day is going well. Today we're going to talk about the Word 2016 exam and we're looking at the domain called Create and Manage Documents. Overall this accommodates for 25 to 30 percent of the overall exam and this domain is pretty big. Let me go ahead and throw a graphic up of what this domain covers. There are over 25 different items that you could be tested on from this domain and it has five different subdomains. In this second video, we're going to talk about customized option and views for documents and print and save documents. Let's go ahead and jump into Word. We are talking about the Word 2016 exam, and we're looking at the Create and Manage Documents domain which accounts for 25 to 30% of the overall exam. Specifically, we're looking at the subdomain called Customize Options and Views for Documents. The first thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to change the document views. Now you can do some of that here in the status bar by just clicking the different views, or you could go to the view tab here at the top and you have things like the read mode, which allows you to read the document more easily by just having these little arrows here to flip through the document. You have the web layout mode. You have draft. You have the outline mode, which is a little bit tricky. Make sure you click this close to get out of it. And then the normal layout is the print layout. It also tells us that we need to be able to customize views by using the zoom settings. So you could click this zoom button here. And if it tells you to have it with 200%, you could easily do that. If I click back to 100%, it'll let me do that. In the Zoom section, I also have many pages here. So if I wanted to see two by four, I could. It'll show the document that way. I could click back to one here or multiple pages or page width. So depending on what is asked in the question, you'll want to know the different ways to zoom within the document. This subsection also tells us that we need to be able to split the window. For this, we're still in the View tab. We're in the Window group. And what we want to do is click here, Split. And what it does is it gives us multiple views of this document. So I can scroll here in the top part. And then in this bottom section, I can also look at a different section. So I can look at two different parts at the same time. The subdomain tells us that we need to be able to customize the quick access toolbar. The quick access toolbar is this blue bar here at the top. It's often at the top, but sometimes it can be found at the bottom. And so that can flip on you depending on where you have it set. You also have the option of going ahead and there are a few that you can just click and it will add it to the quick access toolbar or you can click more commands and you have popular commands and then you have some of the ribbons and then you have some other sections that they give you. You can just click the section and then click the feature you want to add and click add. We're we'll going to click cancel here. This subdomain tells us that we also need to be able to show and hide formatting symbols. To see those, we would go to the Home tab here at the top, and it doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on in this document, but if I click the Show Hide button here, it shows me that there's actually a lot of formatting going on that we didn't previously know about. Now, as a domain objective, this seems quite simple, so I'm going to show you another place where you can find this. If you go to the File, and then you go to the Options section, and in Display, you also have these formatting marks, which will display if it's checked regardless of if this button is clicked or not. So if I wanted to see the paragraph marks, I'll click OK. And notice that they still are there even when I untoggle this button. This subdomain tells us also that we need to be able to add document properties. To do that, we want to go to the File tab here at the top. And in order to do that, we want to be in this section here for properties. Now, this group is small, but if I click this Show All Properties, notice I get quite a few more sections. So if it tells you to add something and it's not there, remember you can click show more properties and it'll open that up. And we'll go ahead and add here to the status. We'll just call this draft. Now, something I noticed that my students do when they're typing in properties is they'll forget to do things like capitalize words or often what I see is they add an extra space at the end of their word. I'm not sure why they do that, but they do. So when you're typing this in, make sure you capitalize your words and make sure you don't add extra information that's not necessary for the question. When you're done, you'll want to go ahead and click out of it to set that text, and then you can close out of the backstage view. We're looking at the subdomain called Print and Save Documents. The first thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to modify our print settings. 
to do that, I want to go to the file tab here at the top. I want to select print. In this section, we have some print settings that we can change, such as print all pages, printer selection. We can print just the current page. You have the option of selecting which pages you want to print. So I could do one through two comma four to print only those pages. I could print them one sided or print on both sides. Collated versus uncollated can be confusing. Collated is if I had to print five copies of this, collated would print one, two, three, four, five, six. Then it would start off on the new document one, two, three, four, five, six. Whereas uncollated would print five copies of the first page and then it would print five copies of the second page and then move on through each page in the document. You also have the ability to change the page size. You have the margins. You can change this from one page per sheet to four if you wanted to. So there's a lot in this print section. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to save documents in alternative file formats. One of the things you could be asked to do is to export. So we'll look here first and then we could create a PDF or XPS document. And if I click that, you'll want to make sure you map to the correct folder wherever it has you save. You can change your file type from PDF or XPS. You can open the file after publishing, and you can also change some of these settings here and you have this options. You might also be asked to go to the save section. And then you would map to your folder where you're going to save it, and then you'll have the option of saving it to things like a Word macro enabled document or maybe a previous generation of Word. You have the PDF and XPS document, which we looked at in a different section, so you should be familiar with the different save types. And then when you're saving, just make sure you know how to navigate to the documents folder or to wherever it has you save. We'll go ahead and click cancel here. For the last section of this subdomain, let's go to the info tab because it tells us that we need to be able to inspect the documents for three things. Inspecting a document for hitting properties or personal information. We're going to click here on check for issues and we're going to look here at the inspect document and it tells us hidden properties or personal information. It's going to say, do you want to save changes before it begins? We'll click yes. When you're on the exam, whatever it's asking you to look for to remove, you want to make sure that that section is checked. And there's quite a few things in this document. So we'll go ahead and click inspect. And now that it's done inspecting, it didn't find a whole lot within this document, but it did find some document properties and an author. If it wanted me to remove that, all I would need to do is click remove all and it would pull that from the document. Then you have the option of reinspecting, but we'll go ahead and click close. We'll go back to file info because it tells us that we need to check for things like accessibility. And it tells us in this section that it will check the document for content that people with disabilities might find difficult to read. So it's telling me that there's no issues with this document, but some things that might flag are things like a picture if it doesn't have alternative text to help with things like screen readers. So you want to be mindful of that. And then our final section, if we go back to the file info, we're going to check for issues. And this time we're going to check for compatibility. And what this does is it looks for things in this document that might not work with previous versions of Word, like maybe a 97 to 2003 document. And so I don't have anything special going on here, so it didn't pull anything. But if it did, it would tell you here. We'll click OK. Thank you for watching this video. My hope always as I create new content is that my viewers feel better able to carry out tasks in Microsoft. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That way you get a notification when I release my next video. Do you have a suggestion on a video that I should make? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you want me to create. That way I can better help you.